Corn Warriors is presented by Pivot Bio. Welcome back to In Season Management 2022 with Corn Warriors Season 6. Tonight we're going to take you to Cedarville, Ohio to check in with Corey Atley. Then we're off to Sutton, Nebraska to check in with the auctioners. Corey's going to show us some plant analysis with Pivot Bio's Proven 40 and reintroduce us to his wife, Stephanie Atley. Then they're going to take a look at some fields and show us some happy, healthy looking corn. Then it's off to Sutton, Nebraska to hop in the sprayer with the auctioners where Levi is going to attempt to teach Jenna how to spray corn. And later, Jenna will walk you through the brutal effects the strong Nebraska winds can have on crops and man-made structures alike. Can these farmers keep their fields clean and healthy enough to help overcome the odds they are up against? It's going to take more than thoughts and sprayers in this episode of Corn Warriors Season 6. Today is June 16th, and we're gonna go out with Pivot Bio. So we have a bunch of different trials. We're heading to the field to go check some Proven 40 corn. Jim, this might be a dumb question, but can you grab me a flag or two so when we set stuff down in the field, I know where it's at? Yeah. AKA my iPad? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How many iPads have you lost in the field? <laughs> well, <laughs> so right now, Colin's heading out. He is going in where the Proven 40 was treated and furrow on, on the corn. We're gonna check to see the nitrogen amount. Um, he's doing the treated. What I'm going to do, I'm gonna dig up three entire plants from the check and then three entire plants from the treated area. You ever seen 100,000 population on corn? Where'd you do 100? Right here on this road in front of you. This John Deere plugged in the meter wrong. So we had one row that was going nuts. And uh, we finally figured it out, but in this field, there's one row that planted at 100,000. These are the plants that we dug so we could kind of take a look at root development. Corey picked these untreated checks, so this one's on him. You're welcome. <laughs> Not bad, huh? Not bad. Yeah, the size difference is pretty noticeable. The root development is pretty noticeable. The stock diameter is the most impressive, averaging 0.9 inches on the left and 1.2 on the right. So you're up like 20%. That tells a really good story to me uh, because we tend to succeed when the plant gets out of the ground okay, mm -hmm. but then faces some stresses down the road because yep. those stresses are gonna cause your traditional nitrogen to leach or denitrify. Uh, where ours is, is still coming in daily without that issue. So it looks to me like you've had some issues with that traditional nitrogen application uh, not being used as effectively in the plant where we've been able to make up the difference. Yep. Um, and it's, it's, we really see this kind of growth differences the most, again, when we get the plant out of the ground okay, and then the stresses really start to hit. But I guess the part that always gets me and with other people, you know, yeah, that's great, but what's it gonna yield? Well, obviously, right now, if you had to pick one, you're gonna choose that one. Which cart? Which, which <laughs> horse are you, are you gonna put your cart yeah. on? Yeah. But Mother Nature holds all the keys. Mm -hmm. We it, could come back out here a month from now, and it's not gonna matter. Yeah. Yeah. Because we could have a weather event. We could stay 95 for the next month. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what you've done to the corn. It's all gonna be bad. Nobody's gonna be happy. Yeah. But right now, this is proving that the Proven 40 is doing its job. So June 16th, back to spraying after a delayed rain event. So we're finally just now getting rolling on spraying some corn. I'm gonna take you in here to our chemical shed and show you guys exactly what all of the recipe is for what we're using. So first we're starting with the Front Runner Premium. It's an AMS water conditioner. So that way we have the water conditioner go, go, going in with the product. This is the Extreme Post Complete for corn. So this is our full lineup of your micronutrients, your zinc, manganese, boron, iron. Then we come to here with the PGR, the Insight. So this is one of my favorite PGRs out right now. Then we come over here to the Front Runner Drift. 
So all we're using that is, you know, for, for, for a drift agent to go in, very low use rate. And we're finishing up here with the Kelpine. That's kind of our secret sauce. We're also, we got uh, glyphosate going on in, in the injector of the sprayer. So that way we're not using it on every acre, only on the outsides and then where we need it. And then we're also going with a full rate of fungicide. But this is pretty much our V5 mixture. And with this, what we're trying to do is affect the rows around. And all the products you see here in this building can be found at www.advancedshield.com. So right now we just loaded up Pivot Bio. The Proven 40 product, mm -hmm. which is very cool. We're out looking at one of our Pivot Bio plots. I like the looks of it. It's not leaching away in the groundwater. It's not running off when we get a hard, heavy rain. Not bad, huh? Not bad. The Proven 40 is doing its job. It's that missing link that keeps my plant where it needs to be. Pivot Bio passed the test. So I feel far, like. the Pivot Bio is checking all the boxes. Yeah. So you rev it up to 2,000 again, and then the orange button is what makes it spray? That's what makes it spray. Okay, you told me to go really slow, and I felt like you went way faster than I went. Well, I for your first time, Jenna? I, I'm just trying to learn. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need you to be a good teacher. I know. I just... So what are you clicking now? I'm just adjusting everything. Adjusting the boom? Yeah. This is the left side. Right side. Okay. It's kind of a lot of buttons to push and pay attention to. Ooh, that could have been nasty. Did you see it coming? Yeah. You're well aware of your obstacles. All right, we gotta go turn that pivot on. Big weeds here. Dude, I thought I was gonna spray the Andros. You wanna? You cheating? Sorry, no, I just forgot. Is that Palmer? Uh, yeah. Okay, pull that back. Okay. Keep that center. See that this? little knot, that little. In the middle yep, of the row. Yep. Yep. Okay. So what order do you do it Ease, in? Just start easing forward. And then I hit the orange yep, button. I'll tell you when. Go. Okay, go, go. Woo! Woo! I'm spraying! <laughs> How am I doing? Good. Okay. You can go a little slower if you want. Okay, yeah, that'd be nice. Oh, oh. Okay, so eventually. It's hard to stay center and watch your booms, eh? Yeah. Okay, eventually you're gonna need to fade over. Fade over. Slow down a little more. Come out, you gotta come out. Keep going. Oh, look, look. There, stay in this one. You're fine, go, you're good, oh, fine. Okay. I okay. just wanted to straighten you out so we didn't. There you go, just drive. You're driving on top of the corner, there you go. All righty. Okay, now, you I have kind to of see where the again? corn, no, no, you're good, but you see where the corn gets taller? Yeah. That's not our corn, so when we hit that line. You stop, hit, hit the, the orange, orange button. Hit the orange button, I'll tell you when, just get your thumb on the orange button. It's on it. Okay, hit it. Oh, oh. We're running this corn over. Well, you didn't tell me to slow down. You just told me to hit the orange button. Was it supposed to be like an all-in-one motion? Yep. Oops, that was a doozy, wasn't it? Yep. All right. 
Yeah. Oh, that was my allotted. Well, we're going to hit a big drop here, and I don't think you're going to want it. <laughs> I don't think you're going to want it in the seat. Let me go through this. Yeah, do you want to do another pass? Yeah, Levi, I did like a whole 50 yards. You did good. And you'll never get better without. Exactly. That's how I feel about you and the dishes, you know? Ha. Uh, Folding laundry. That's completely different. And how is it completely different? It's the same concept. You won't get better until you practice. Because I'll never get better at that. I did drive a little bit. Cool. Yeah. It probably, he said it wasn't the best field to learn on, but it was fun. It's a lot. I did give him credit. I said, I understand why you won't bring Crawford with you and why you're bad at taking phone calls while you're spraying because there's a lot of things he's adjusting constantly and not running over the corn. We have GPS on it, but he says it's not that accurate, so he doesn't use it. He's moving this pivot. It was in the way. He kind of forgot about it. So he's gonna wait till that's all the way out of the way. I think he's gonna go spray another field and then come back and finish this one. Next probably will be a V10 Valtima application. It's so much more than Fungicide. It goes above and beyond disease control. Really like the BASF fungicides. It's a stress mitigator. It's plant health. But we have applied a toad on this farm, you know. Done a great job for me. Definitely money made. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely See how green this still is? That's right. It's never too early to be talking about a program anymore. Farmers deserve a nitrogen that works as hard as they do. One that stays with the crop until the job is done. It's time to turn to a better nitrogen with Pivot Bio. So here we're at Docks. We're in a big 400 acre field here. Right smack dab here in the middle of it, we have uh, short corn. So brand new hybrid variety coming out hopefully here soon. And this is short stature corn, or as we call it here at Carly Farms, po corn. So we're gonna walk out here, take a look at it, see if we can visibly see any difference. I don't think we will right now, but I think it's neat to be able to see that at this stage here, about V6, V7, it all looks the same. So we're gonna dig a couple up, just see if we can see anything different, see if it looks different. So like I said, this is first time I've got to look at it here. We had a few acres we got to play with this year of this short hybrid, short, short stature corn. Uh, the biggest benefit for us to having this is we're still gonna be able to use the sprayer that we have. We do not have a high, high clearance sprayer. So we're gonna be able to feed this all throughout the season. If this does work out, and I promise you, we're gonna throw the book at it. We're gonna see the limitations of it. We've got it planted from 32,000 all the way up to 64,000. So we're on 20 inch rows. So we really want to find the top end. We want to find the bottom end. We want to find out where it finally fails and where it likes to live. So first year for it, we want to test it, put it through the ringer, but we're also going to feed it, make sure it has a happy life and everything's good. Right now, you got two suckers already coming off both sides of it. Great roots, brace roots, roots look great. Great seed depth. Good girth on the stock diameter here. It's loving its life. Um, one thing I kind of want to look at here is we'll go dig up. So another, your normal practice or your normal hybrids, your tall corn or whatever you want to call it, non-short corn is right over here beside it. So I want to dig that up here and just see if we can see a uh, size, you know, length different between the nodes. All right, tell us, so if we look here, really not seeing too much of a difference yet. 
say it's probably a two inch, two inch difference between the nodes so far. Once it gets bigger, we'll be able to cut it and that's the best way to do this, to be able to tell. But you know, this is a good, happy, healthy corn. So is this, so this is gonna be really interesting to see. Look at that. Short corn's looking pretty impressive so far. This is our fourth day of being 90 plus degree temperatures. You look out here, you don't see a whole, it don't look like that, we're pineapple farming. So that's the key here. This corn's not rolling, it's not puckering, it's still dark green. The thing that does scare me is, you know, we got 95 to 100 degrees for the following week too. So we're actually out here spraying in the morning and then in the evenings, continuing to put on a product called Kelpine, which helps and this is the reason why our corn is not rolled or pineapple right 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 now kelpine has terpenes in it terpenes lived inside of a cacti plant it's what makes cacti plant go its life without water so what we're doing is is we're taking that out putting it in with kelp putting it in on your corn or soybeans it reduces stress all that's doing is just telling your plant hey don't freak out you're fine relax don't stress i got you and it will buy it time for the temperature change or for a rain event to come so joining me today is my beautiful wife, Stephanie, within Advanced Shield. All the cool and fancy videos you've been seeing, all the social media, that's definitely not me. That's all her. So she's been following us around, really helping with product, getting a bunch of cool shots, doing all the behind the scenes things. It's been a blessing to have her out here. It's been a huge help. So I run the camera. I do a lot of photography, a lot of videos. And then I've also done the drone only once. The drone intimidates me a little bit. It's something that I didn't know I would be good at doing. So when I get in there and kind of explore and the end result is really cool or I get a lot of really positive feedback, I just think that's so awesome. And then another cool thing, we've been getting a lot of testimonials in from, from other growers. She can edit them, add in product spotlights and, and different things like that. I, I'm not a believer in shoving 10 bushel here, 20 bushel here down a grower's throat. Because uh, I'm, I'm a farmer first, and I've been sold so many empty promises. I want you to try the product first. I want you to be able to go out there, get your hands on that product, see it, see what it does for you. So we're, we're, we try to showcase it a little bit different. We want grower video submission coming in. We want to visually show you the side-by-sides, what the products can and cannot do. Uh, like well, and then who else is out here with us, Corey? <laughs> Anybody else out here with us today? I think so. I mean, we got Austin out here today. Oh, it's family Austin. day. It's family day out here. He, Austin said short corn. I want to see short corn. Heck yeah. So we're all out here having a good day. Nice, warm, sunny. You ready to get in the swimming pool? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> I bet he is. Nutrient 8 stand behind me 100%. Benton and me work together. He's my go-to guy. We've probably known each other, what, uh, 10 years at least. You pick the phone up and they're there immediately and I can't put another name on anybody else I'd rather work with. Plants look very healthy. Yeah, sometimes we put secret sauce in it. <laughs> we actually become a real good team. Only the best products from Nutrient for us. So this was one of our bin sites. Last week we had, well, we've had several storms this year in Nebraska. Some of them we've had good warning of, some of them happened in the middle of the night, like this one. And some of them we had no warning at all, kind of like this one as well. There's been a lot of areas around us that had gotten a lot of wind, a lot of hail, all different storms. And then this one, we considered ourselves very lucky through most of the storms. Not that like it's our time for us to pay our dues, but we hadn't lost any pivots up until that point. This storm did take a pivot and then um, obviously the bin site behind us as well. They confirmed after the fact that there was an F2 tornado that kind of started here and went northeast from here with 135 mile per hour winds. There's some other bin sites that got lost. There's, oh, I wouldn't even, I don't know. There was probably over 100 pivots that got flipped that night. 
We know one farmer that lost 16 just of his own pivots, like one farm. We live about three miles from here. And our hired hand had called us and said the bin site's not good. So we all packed up and came down here to check it out. And yeah, this happens to farmers and you see it when it hits close to home. It's kind of emotional. It was kind of a hard day for all of us as a family. So then we drove around looking at all of the damage and the crops. We still, yes, this is a huge loss for us and we'll have to figure something out grain storage wise before harvest, but still consider ourselves very lucky. Some people lost their home, some people got hurt. Some crops were damaged so bad, you can't even tell if it was corn or soybeans that was there. So we didn't have any crops that bad. So we're still considering ourselves very lucky and just thankful that we're all okay and that we can rebuild and just move on. That's kind of how farming goes. You, you gotta want this life because it's not an easy one and stuff like this happens. So it's definitely not for the faint of heart. is normal in Nebraska, thunderstorms are normal, but to have several destructive storms in one season is definitely rare. This season is probably gonna be one we're talking about with our grandkids someday. This pivot we lost in a storm, it was around May 12th. It had a lot of dust in it. There was actually a whole layer of dust in my house. It was a crazy storm. So we lost the pivot. We thankfully had a new pivot up and running within the week. We still have to get this down pivot out of the way, obviously. I wish that there was a way to tally all the pivots that have been lost in our area, because it's an insane number. We've gotten lucky. We've gotten through a lot of storms without losing a pivot, but this time we weren't so lucky. My father-in-law was saying he's never seen a season with so many tires in the air. This one is definitely record-breaking in that aspect. Look at this one. And then even these were just honestly hailed to the ground. I don't think the tornado had actually, it hadn't hit the ground by this point. Um, this is what you're seeing here is wind damage, but also a lot of hail damage. A lot of times the wind, it just kind of like strips the leaves, but when there's clean breaks like that and with how short it was being and it's not all blown over, like that was definitely hail damage where it just got hailed to the ground. So this was a field that we had really high hopes for. Our agronomist who has uh, scouted for our family farm for over 30 years said this is the best he's ever seen on this field. So that was kind of devastating that it took this big of a hit. We're obviously still gonna get a crop out of it, God willing, we don't have any more bad storms, but that top end yield potential is definitely gone. So we covered some spraying today. We finally got back in the field after some storms, covered the extent of our damages, which we're hoping this is the end of the damages for the year. And from here on out, we have spraying, wide dropping, lots of irrigating and fertigating in our future. But for now, that's where we're at. Next week on Corn Warriors. Once it gets shined up, heck, I might get lucky and something might actually start working. It's supposed to be about 100 degrees. This corn is smoking.